In this video, we will look at the reliability assessment function. Study case 4 of the MV distribution network example should be activated. Reliability assessment is used to assess a network's response to possible faults and quantify, in terms of standard indices, the reliability of the customer supply. In the analysis, faults are considered stochastically, meaning that individual fault events cannot be predicted, but the probabilities of events can be modeled using failure rate data. This is configured on the reliability page of the element. When a fault occurs, three things should happen. Firstly, the protection operates, and breakers open to clear the fault from the network. Then the faulted equipment must be isolated from the rest of the network. And finally, re-switching can take place to restore as much demand as possible, whilst leaving the faulted element isolated. With that in mind, let us look at the reliability assessment command. On the basic options page, we define which contingencies, i.e. faults, should be considered. In this case, we want all possible faults on terminals, lines and transformers to be considered, but there is also an option to only consider a selected number. On the protection page, we must determine how the fault will be cleared. We could allow faults to be cleared by any circuit breakers, but it is more realistic to use only switches with protection devices. In Power Factory, this can mean switches with explicitly modeled protection. But it will also include other switches that have been configured, on the reliability page, to be considered as a switch with protection device. It is possible to run the reliability assessment without considering power restoration. But if the option is selected, Power Factory will use its optimal power restoration function to determine the sequence of events for restoring supply. On this page, costs associated with loss of supply can be configured. Here we will use a global cost dependent on the outage duration. The Constraints page enables the user to ensure that system constraints are not breached during the restoration process. This might entail some load shedding. We will now execute the command. With the calculation complete, let us first look at the overview diagram. It is colored to indicate the annual interruption time, which is calculated for loads. The areas colored red, are likely to experience over one hour per year of interruption to supply, and it can be seen how the extremities of the network are weakest in this respect. We can use this icon to run reports, starting with a system summary report. Here we can see the reliability of the network summarized using the standard indices. Commonly used indices include ENS, or energy not supplied, SIFE, which is the system average interruption frequency index, and SID, which is the system average interruption duration index. In a further post processing step, we can use this icon to see a breakdown of contributions to the indices, according to the type of network component. We would now like to know which particular faults are contributing the most. So let us return to the main reporting dialog, where we can use this option to create a tabular report of contributions. The table can be sorted as required. For example, we can sort to see which faults contribute most to SIFI. However, these results apply to the system as a whole. We might instead want to focus on one load in particular. 
Let us look at the load objects and see which loads suffer the most interruption to supply, in terms of time. We will use the result variable load point interruption time as our criterion. Load LD MV590 is at the top of the list. Let us see where this is, in the network. We can now calculate the contributions to the indices for just this load. We see that overhead line faults are the major cause of loss of supply for these customers. Let us now generate a tabular report of contributions again. This time, only contributions related to this load are calculated. Faults on these elements contribute most to the loss of supply. It is not just the local faults, as we might expect, but also faults elsewhere in the same feeder, because these will result in supply interruptions during the fault clearing and power restoration process. In the next video, we look at the optimal power restoration function in more detail, and see how the trace feature can be used to see the sequences of power restoration events graphically.